I'm Felix. I guess I'm a bit of an outsider here because a couple of weeks ago I um, didn't know what XBRL is or have never heard about it before. And I bet it's the same for you and XL Wings. They both start with an X and so it makes us sit like in the same boat. We're probably both to each other's uh, technology. So today um, I'm going to show you how you can use Excel Wings to take the XBRL data and create automated um, Excel and, and PDF reports out of it. And uh, basically I ended up here because somebody who is actually doing this thought it was a good idea uh, for me to present what's, what's possible. So it's going to be a relatively short talk, so I'm not going to um, make you stay too long. Uh, before the opera begins, I guess. And um, so, yeah, I'm just going to introduce myself uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you haven't heard of, of what I'm doing. Then I'm going to introduce to you what Excel Wings does, and then I'm going to show you how you can, yeah, marry Excel Wings and XBRL and produce automated reports. So um, I created the Excel Wings project back in 2014. It's also mostly an open source project. It was an exclusively open source project for like the first six years, but then um, open, uh, nowadays it's an open core project, meaning it has some pro features on top of the open source. They're still open in the sense that you can access the source code. Um, I did write a book, uh, meanwhile, also two and a half years ago. It's about Python for Excel. It is probably due for uh, a new edition because Microsoft, as you may have heard, recently added an official um, Python in Excel feature. So probably going to be extended at some point with that new content. Um, and also I'm currently working on a first uh, LinkedIn learning course that should be uh, coming out next year, which will then actually be about the new and official Python in Excel um, integration from Microsoft just to like sort of like um, compare what we are going to use today, which is Excel Wings with Python and Excel. They're mostly sort of like um, complementary. So they're doing different things as we shall see. And lastly, um, I'm also working on another product for Excel, which is Excel version control. So it's uh, basically a tool which helps you understand what changed in different versions of Excel. So like if you have this famous underscore, you know, version two final, final Excel workbooks, and you want to see like how it differs from the final without the second final, then that's like a good, uh, a good way to, to basically, you know, compare them and keep track of them. But it's not what, what we are going to talk about today. Um, but if anything of the things that I'm going to talk about today seem interesting to you, feel free to follow me on either Twitter, LinkedIn, or there is also an Excel Wings channel on YouTube. All right, with that out of our way, uh, let me just yeah briefly explain what Excel Wings does. So Excel Wings really is sitting between your Excel workbook or your Excel application and the Python programming language. And it's really just a Python package that enables you to have these two technologies work together. And then so basically in a nutshell, what that gives you is you get all of a sudden you get access to all of the good things that Python is good at, which is, you know, accessing databases, external APIs, such as the XBRL API, for instance. Uh, you can you can do anything that normally you can you can access you know the the hottest AI packages nowadays, um, et cetera, et cetera. So all of a sudden you get access to this uh, functionality, and so this here is basically the only code I'm going to show you today. So you know <clears throat> here. So in basically the hello world in in Excel Wings is you can you know write a value let's say to a cell. And as you can see, like, you know, you have to sell address A1, you just assign a text to it, and that's pretty much it. You're on the program, and it'll automate, automatically write that into your spreadsheet. Now, um, that's part of the open source package, and that's what many people were using to automate their Excel reporting for many years until um, I was approached by a pension fund uh, a couple of years ago, and they were saying, well, that's cool, but we need something a little bit better. And so... What they were sort of like mostly annoyed by is that, let's say, like they introduce a title now in cell A1, 
which you know means they have to push down everything else and then they have to go through the code and update all their references. So they have to say, instead of A1 now, it's going to be A2 so that they have room for their title. And so like they were all the time like juggling back and forth between template and the Python code and they didn't like that. So um, what I've created is um, this add-on, which is Excel Wings Reports, and it basically lets you allow to use placeholders in the Excel spreadsheet instead of, you know, having to say this goes in cell A1. You just take the name of that data that you want to work with of a, of a table or a chart, and you just put put it into uh, in between two curly braces, and um, then you just have to basically assign uh, the content of that name, uh, basically the Python developer, it just has, you know, take the table, assign it to that name, and then the one who is uh, doing the template can just work with that name without having to do any coding. And so in that sense, um, what uh, this allows you is to actually split the work between the Python developer and sort of like the report designer or the Excel user. So like the Excel user with no programming um, experience can actually change or create uh, their own reports and maintain them, and they can leave the, the Python developer alone. And so, uh, yeah, that's sort of like how things work on, on, on the side of Excel Wings. And in, in this last section, I am going to show you how you can put now the two worlds of XBRL and, and Excel Wings together to uh, produce an automated reporting engine. And so just to amend sort of like the picture that we had before, so like we go from left from Excel, we have Excel wings that connects us to Python. And then we now just take Python to talk to the XBRL. And um, by talking to XBRL, uh, what I mean is basically uh, we talk to the API. So there is on um, what is apparently called FXO, the filings xbrl.org. There is an API that you can use and basically get the data from the XBRL reports in the format you like. So you can get, you can download um, XML reports, I guess, but then I was told that I should absolutely use the JSON reports, which is apparently the hottest new feature in the XBRL world. So I obviously did what I was told and um, the XBRL JSON format looks something like that so like it's definitely human readable you can sort of like understand what's going on and it's also easy to work with um, in any programming language but obviously i'm going to use python for it and um yeah at this point i'm going to switch to the um to a live demo if there is anybody who would love to see more code than the one i showed you uh it is on on github so if you go over here, um, you will be able to find the code that I'm using. Um, but for today, I'm just going to show you how this would look like from um, a user's perspective. So as I told you, the idea basically about the Excel Wings Reports package is that you can sort of like automate your ad hoc reports. And I guess, at this point, uh, you wouldn't want to use it for, let's say, like, you know, a, a fully automating, like, in a high-frequency fashion, uh, gazillions of reports somewhere on a web server. It's more thought to be, like, you run it um, occasionally on your own machine. You need to, like, um, do some manual adjustments, um, as I hear people like to do with reporting before or after the actual reporting. Um, so it's it's thought for for this kind of use case, um, or maybe like if you have a new product and you need to pull in data from XBRL, you don't have like a fully productionized uh, reporting engine set up. So this is sort of like you know keeps you keeps you going at the beginning of of a new project. And so yeah, as I as I told you before, um, I as a sort of like a business user. I don't have to understand what's going on behind the scenes. I just need to know sort of like the names of the data that I can access. And so like, um, yeah, this is the title here. Maybe I should have probably called this company or entity. Um, this is the currency of the report that I want to show. 
And you can see like these placeholders, um, I used them throughout the report. I have the description here. I used them within um, the, uh, the, the chart over here and also below here. Um, I have a figure down there. So yeah, the ton of placeholders, I can, you know, color it the way I want. And um, at the end of the day, uh, the, the uh, user, the business user, just basically clicks on a button and then gets um, a report produced from it. And so for now, I've just basically had uh, three JSON reports or three JSON files that I was uh, picking up and then uh, basically uh, turning into these uh, couple of reports. And a couple of things I, I want to point out here. So maybe from top to the bottom, um, as you can see here, on these, um, well, on, on this PDF, on this PDF report, I have a header, which is like borderless. That's something which is super um, difficult to do, like in a standard version of Excel, simply because um, of the scaling. That's also, I guess, the reason why uh, many people like link up their Excel workbook with Word, where they can actually do that stuff. Uh, the, the way that uh, Excel Wings here solves it is that you can just, um, you know, go to your uh, your your um, style style department, your design department, and and get some some PDF with your your letterhead, and then you can actually print the Excel sheet on that existing PDF. Um, as you can see here, that was our title placeholder. Um, this was our uh, currency placeholder. Then um, yeah, just some text that we pasted in the date here, which you can have it formatted in a way that 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 works for you. Um, then this was a as you as you may remember from from the template here, this was a uh, standard Excel chart. So you just fill the numbers behind it and it adjusts. And then down here we do have a table. Uh, two things to mention about the table. One is that it is dynamic in the sense of like, you know, it pushes down the content that comes after it. So you can see here on the left, you have like uh, fewer rows than here on the right, but the, um, the following graphics is still sort of like in the same distance to the table. The other thing is that uh, you get the striped rows, like similar to what we would get like in an Excel table. And um, also that is done in a dynamic way. So like, you know, depending on how many rows that specific report uh, gives you. And then at the very bottom, uh, you do have not a uh, chart from Excel. As you can see here, we don't have another chart at the bottom. We again, just have a placeholder, just called it fig for figure. Was a bit lazy, probably should have called it like equity components. Um, so that is to show you that you can use uh, Matplotlib or just the Python plotting engines um, that you have access to. Maybe for this chart, uh, that wouldn't have been necessary. The, the Excel charting is totally fine for that, but maybe you have uh, some more complex chart that is difficult to do in Excel. Then you have the option to sort of like use the Python engine for creating uh, these, these plots and charts. And so, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, then you could go back or the, 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 the person responsible for reports, they could go back and then just like change a few things. They could say, okay, I really want to have this in blue. And maybe they would like to, um, put in the currency over here in about, uh, uh following the about. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So like they, they can play around on it, uh, on, on, on that template on their own, and then they can just rerun uh, those reports. And, um, did I not save that? Yeah, no. And then, yeah, you, you do have, uh, you know, the changes reflected in, in the templates, um, sorry, in the reports, in the PDF. And so, yeah, it's sort of like giving a lot of power to the business user. And, uh, I guess the, the good thing about, you know, being able to automate all this in Python is you get access to XBRL, but you can also get access to all the other system that you may want to, you know, combine in your report, uh, where you need the XBRL data.
And uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to show you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. What did you start with as the input for this? So the input is basically uh, files that you can download programmatically from the uh, filings from the XBRL uh, API. So what that gives you is basically you download. You're using these JSON. Files. Yes, exactly. So that's that's so, basically the data source. So that's coming from XBRL International. Um, right. It's coming from filings. Right. No, I, but how do they, those are filings that have been converted to JSON, assuming, right? Is that right? There, I'm not the expert, yeah. So what I'm trying to get at is if I want to do this uh, for SEC filings, which are not in a JSON format that I know of, how would I do this? Or you could just read the the XML directly. I mean, this is really yeah. This is really just you know Python code. Okay. <laughs> Can I ask a question on the narrative stuff? So you about Sainsbury's and think, what, how did you pull that, or was that a manual exercise? Uh, you... No, that is. Uh, let me just open that in a. <laughs> so that is actually that is part of the uh, of those files. So like if I believe it's like at the bottom for, for the about section. I yeah. wouldn't have thought. So. Oh no! It's uh, actually it's it's. What a, did you use? Oh. Um, here, the description of nature of entity operations oh, okay. and principal okay. Okay. activities. Any other questions? Okay. Really Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Great.